Good morning, Calvary. We have had quite a morning. <laughs> so we are so thankful we see you signing in online this morning here. I already see we've got Crystal Schnarr and her family are logged on. Um, Brian and Angie Tufnell are on, I see you. We've got George and oh, we've got another family popping on there, just flowing in the church. Um, guess what? I have a super big surprise for you this morning. We've got a, a new co-host this morning. I'm just going to let you say good morning, and I'm not going to spoil it until the view actually flips over to you. So ready? Go. Good morning, Calvary family. It is a joy and a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, I'm co-hosting with uh, Kelly. I must tell you, I'm a little nervous. I'm actually better standing in front seeing all your faces so this is uh, uh, a new experience for me I have to tell you eight o'clock this morning it was hair and makeup and wardrobe and uh, I'm sitting here with my iPad on a card table with six books propped around it so um, if I disappear um, I'll adjust and come back <laughs> so uh, but it's great to be here this morning and it has been a process as Kelly said I am awed and amazed at our tech team they are incredible so shout out to you guys this morning yeah they've been amazing they've been working hard since early this morning apparently there's um, news articles out don't google them now but apparently church has broken zoom 
<laughs> Usually, I think they do some kind of updates uh, Saturday night, Sunday mornings. It's quiet, but no, not in this season. So um, we're hoping that things will run as usual this morning, and uh, you'll give us grace if they don't. And the glitches may just help you with your bingo card this morning. So if you didn't see it, check out the links below or your Calvary Connects. There's a bingo card for you to print off and um, do some fun stuff this morning. Maybe I'll eat my banana. That's just a hint for one of the ones that you'll see. <laughs> but did you did you print a bingo card this morning, Kathy, or do you plan to do that this morning? Do you know what? I totally forgot that this morning, Kelly. So, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> maybe you'll have to just go in the prayer room or something. Maybe you could chat about, can... about that instead if people don't have a bingo card. Yes, I, I would encourage you this morning, uh, friends, if you, um, uh, regardless of whether you're joyful or not this morning, whatever's going on in your life, to uh, take an opportunity to go into the prayer room. Um, last week was my first opportunity to actually pray for people. And uh, Ian and I tag teamed and it was... Um, it was really, it was really great and uh, uh, an awesome experience. So um, I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Yeah. And there are um, uh, links below the YouTube channel for the prayer room. You can just follow those links in again. Uh, you may find some glitches this morning just because of what we're finding with zoom this morning, but just keep clicking. We did find that you, we were able to, finally get in and so hopefully prayer room happens this morning and you're able to log in and if there's glitches just refresh your screen a few times um, and down below there are also links for your Calvary um, coffee hour afterwards hopefully by then it's up and running and you don't have any glitches with that either and I'm pretty sure there's a, a square on your bingo card for coffee hour so yeah um, Kathy, you wouldn't see this, but there's some comments coming in. The, the Rose family says, so great to see you, Kathy. We've got <laughs> another one. Um, I'm scrolling on my screen here. I love that Kathy's doing this. So you've got some shout outs this morning. Picture your um, church family in front of you with a big smile on their face going, Kathy's here. <laughs> do you want to highlight? Great, Kelly. Do you want to highlight one of the other? I think um, nearing the end of May, we've we want some people to know some deadlines for some things. Do you want to highlight that? I will, Kelly. Um, so um, we we are coming to the kind of the cutoff date for uh, sending in notes and emails and cards for Marianne. So that is um, for Monday. But if you've suddenly realized this weekend that you have haven't done that um, just send Lori Silverthorne or myself uh, a quick email or call us and let us know that um, it's still coming and um, we'll probably take the rest of this week to gather everything together um, and then um, uh, we want to honor Marianne and um, um, gather those things together and uh, just just send our love and uh, and best wishes in a package for her so there's grace for that this week beautiful um, and so those can be sent in. Maybe you already highlighted that, but how if if someone has like a actual card that they want to give, how would they go about doing that? Do you know? So at this point, I would suggest dropping it at Lori's. Um, I, I'm finding our mail is really slow during COVID, but um, if you do want to mail it, you can let us know that it's in the mail, and we'll certainly wait for it. So you can mail it to the church or drop it at Lori's house. She has a mailbox beside her front door. Beautiful. Um, I, I'm going to tell you I, my split screen here. The Van Bo Bruin family's joined us. John and Linda Cress are here this morning, and they say, you look wonderful, Kathy. So <laughs> the, the hair and makeup the, earlier this morning, you know, the, whoever did that for you did a great job. <laughs> the Stickney family's on. That's Tough Nails are here. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in case you just popped on and you didn't know this yet, I have a banana here for a reason, and it's not to make a phone call. There is a bingo card, some fun to do this morning while you watch and listen, 
And we did have some uh, technical glitches this morning. Um, Kathy can probably <laughs> talk you through. This was your first time being a part of the check-in and the tech run through this morning. How was it for you, Kathy? It was uh, a little stressful. So just to give you an idea, we had to switch from Zoom to Skype and uh, walk through that. And the only thing I could see on my camera was the view out my front window. So my face wasn't showing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we had a few things to walk through. But um, Dan and Steve and Dave have been awesome this morning. Yeah, we are honored to have such a gifted body of people that we work with. And um, the Calvary Connects came out on Friday and we have a Psalm study happening on Tuesday nights. Um, Kathy, you've been to that and you were sharing with me earlier about some of the highlights and just how good and rich that's been. Do you want to speak about that for a second? Yeah, I, I do, Kelly. Uh, so... I think this coming Tuesday is possibly our last uh, time, but if you haven't uh, joined before, please consider it. Um, we're doing Psalm 23. Orville is amazing, and um, it, it's a very diverse group, which it really excites me. So we've got uh, young right through to our elders, and, and uh, their perspectives and wisdom has been um, amazing. So I would encourage you to, to uh, tag on Tuesday night if you can. Beautiful. So as you're settling in this morning, grab your bingo card, um, check out the links below for prayer room all through the service this morning and afterwards coffee hour. Make sure you're a part of Calvary Connects and getting emails. And I'm going to throw it over one last time. Kathy's going to bless us and pray us into worship this morning. Well, Calvary family, uh, one thing that God's been highlighting me uh, to me this week is um, uh, worship, and I I went on to more three times this week, and and so we have Jordan, Dave, and, and Drew this week. But what God was really drawing my attention to was not the not the music, but the way all three were just worshiping with their whole hearts. It was so evident um, on their faces and um, in their in their posture, and uh, um, I've been reading in the Psalms about David talks about shout to the Lord, sing a new song, uh, kneel in worship, lift holy hands. So worship looks like a lot of different things, but the one thing that is consistent is, is our gratitude and the condition of our heart. So um, I just wanted to uh, highlight that uh, this morning, Calvary family. So wherever you're coming from this morning, um, I know our, our, our tech guys are a little stressed today. Um, wherever, whatever's been happening in your world this week, um, let's just take a moment and turn our eyes to Jesus and let's quiet our hearts. So Father God, this morning, I just want to give you praise and honor and thanks for who you are. Jesus, you are the firm foundation on which we stand. And one thing that we can be sure of is your unfailing love and your care and your protection and provision for us. God, you are good. You are good. You are good all the time. And so, Father, we just uh, turn our eyes to you this morning. We quiet our minds and our hearts, and we ask that you uh, speak a word that is just uniquely and especially for us this morning. Holy Spirit, just cover us with your peace and your grace. And we just lift up this time to you and thank you. Thank you for this uh, beautiful family that's gathered together in your name. In Jesus' precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, Calvary. It is good to see you, kind of. Normally on Sunday mornings, I've been part of the behind the scenes crew, so it is great to uh, share a little bit from, from my heart um, and just encourage us this morning. The, the word I feel God putting on my heart for 
for me this week and for, for us as a community is this, that you, Calvary, as individuals and as a church family, you are a champion. You are a champion. You are a victor today. I want you to turn to the person in your room and go, hey, you are a champion. I can I can admit that there have been plenty of days, even in the last a week or two, where I have not felt like a champion. I have not felt like I've been winning, whether it's in things that I have been doing or even in my pursuit and times of connecting with God, feeling like I'm missing the mark, whether it be in my mindset, feeling not like a winner at all or or in my anointings and the ways that I serve and even in the ways that I connect with God and rally myself and rally other people in this particular season it's been it's been really hard and as we know when we start to get stuck in those spaces we forget who we are we forget our identity and we let those lies just make us feel, well, not like champions some days, isn't it? And and I think too, when I think about this journey, we started off by kind of sprinting out the gates. We've talked about the sprint and I know myself, that's kind of how I started kind of chasing after it. And we just kind of ran as best as we could to figure out what this was gonna look like. And then we realized, oh, this this isn't actually gonna be a sprint. This is This is a marathon. Now, neither sprints or marathons are two things I get excited about. And as Kelly said, I didn't sign up for either of them. But we recognized that we needed to find new rhythms, uh, find our new pace and a new stride. In, an, in our relationship with God, I realized I needed to figure out how to rest, how to pause, how to go back to abiding while not just running, but abiding. And out of that, figuring out what my next steps were to be. But that's sometimes been hard. Even in the midst of of figuring that all out, let's just admit that that's been hard. But this morning, the word that I need to tell myself and I want to release over us this morning is this. Don't stop. Don't stop running. Don't stop moving. Keep going. I'm not talking about doing more and getting those lists done and meeting all the expectations. I'm talking about what God is inviting us into, our steps towards him, our pursuit of him, what he is calling us to be. Keep going, keep moving towards him. Because I know when I sit too long, when I nurse my wounds a little too long, when I start getting stuck in those lies, when I forget who I am, my muscles get cramped, I get tired, I get stubborn, I get whiny. When I start looking just at the obstacles in the way of my race and in my steps, when I look at myself, when I look at the limitations, I get stuck. And I have gotten stuck. And I just want to declare over those spirits of discouragement, over the spirit of feeling stuck, that we don't need to live there. And while it may be a different stride, it may be a different pace than before, and it may even feel like you're on a whole different track and a whole different race, that we get to, we need to keep going. And it's, it's a different mindset, isn't it, when we remember that we are champions in this race, that we get to keep running after with a victorious spirit. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says this, no weapon that is formed against you will succeed. Nothing that tries to come in your way gets to succeed because we are champions. The reason I think that word um, stirred up for me was because uh, Bethel 
came out with a new song called "We Are Ch You Are a Champion," and I encourage you to to listen to it. It will stir your spirit and give you hope. And the part that jumped out to me was this: "You are my champion," talking to God. Giants fall when you stand, God. Undefeated every battle you've won. But then it says this. I am who you say I am. You've crowned me with confidence. I'm seated in the heavenly places. I'm undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. So not only is God our champion, not only is he undefeated, because we are in him, we are victorious. We are champions. We are undefeated. Now, that's the kind of attitude, that's the kind of posture that I want to head into my day with, that I wanted to take my next step in. So, so this morning, I declare that we will walk in greater victory and as a champion. I declare a champion spirit over you this morning. So whether you need to just get yourself up to walk again, or maybe your next step is to position yourself to heal, to pause, to rest, to abide. Or maybe you need to pick up your pace. Maybe you need to figure out, again, what God is calling you to run after. Whatever that looks like for you, go, continue to pursue what God is inviting you into. Don't get stuck. Don't feel defeated or discouraged because we are victorious. You are a champion. And so as we continue in worship this morning, and as we take some time to present our offerings to God, yeah, offerings get to continue to include giving of our resources. And I want to encourage you to check out the links below and on our webpage. Make sure you're still thinking about how you can give to support the ministries of this church community. But beyond that, would you ask yourself in this next song, God, what is the next step that I can offer? God, I am victorious. I am a champion. And so I want to keep running after you. Will you help me, God? What is my next step? How will you call me to keep going? So let's, Let's offer ourselves up to him. But as we continue into worship, let us have a posture of a victorious champion of Christ. Awesome, beautiful testimony from Robin. Wow. Let's just pray. I think we'll pray for a minute. God, we just want to thank you for your promises. We want to thank you for Rhonda's words that regardless of circumstances, you call us by your love and grace and how you see us. Jesus, it's your delight to uh, sign us up, to say, uh, I choose you. Um, to, to, we want to sometimes sit on the bench and you send us out onto the field. So we bless you and we thank you, God. Yeah. Um, I want to talk this morning about, um, uh, about, uh, <laughs> sorry, I was getting some feedback in my ear, but, uh, I want to give you an image and the image is really simple. Uh, all week, I've been hearing the similar thing to what Rhonda surprisingly has said, and Dave chose a champion. I don't know if he chose it because knowing Rhonda was going to speak about it, but uh, all, all week, um, I've had this, this thing about David in my head. So I want to give you an image first. Um, imagine yourself. I don't know about you, but uh, I've only run in a few races, and uh, most of the time I'm kind of mid to the back of the pack in terms of any races that I've ever run. But imagine yourself, regardless if you're a, a good runner or not, uh, um, regardless of whether you uh, don't imagine yourself right now with your COVID weight, but instead imagine yourself in your best shape ever. And you're running and you look around and 
nobody near you and the ribbon is right in front of you and you stretch out and the ribbon breaks around you. God sees you and me at that moment of victory. See, God is outside of time. God sees us, you and me, not just in the midst of where we are. God saw us before we were ever formed and loved us. God sees us right now. Uh, and God sees us going forward. Mm -hmm. God sees us at the moment, at the end, when we break through the screen. God sees our victory. So I just want to give you a moment to, to, to imagine yourself in that victory, and let's pray. God, we ask you to show us right now, even just as we take a couple moments here. Uh, I'm hearing that the video is stopping and starting, so I'm just going to pause a few things. Hmm. Right now, you see us as champions and victors. So God, all of those other names that we call ourselves, all of those other voices that have said other things to us, you love us and you see us at the end of the race. Help us to walk into that today. So David has come to mind for me because of this really clear thing. David, we know as king, the man after God's own heart. But David didn't know himself as that from the beginning. There was a moment, many moments in his life where David didn't see himself from the end of the story. David saw himself from the beginning. David saw himself in the midst of things. And yet, how he stewarded the promises God gave him is what got him to victory. You and I are in the midst of many, many things going on in, in the world, in life, and we will be. We have in the past and we will be in the future. But right now, you and I have the choice to, like David, like all God's people, steward, take care of, tend, nurture the promises God has on our life. And doing so allows us to cross the finish line, to, to break the ribbon, to be the victor that God calls us to be. And so I just wanted to look at a couple of verses with David this morning and through that, uh, kind of walk us through that. Uh, if you saw the beginning, of the beginning of the service or the slide background, there's a picture of a little pawn um, looking in a mirror and what it saw in the mirror was a king. It's a moment of how we see ourselves actually determines a little bit of how we walk through things. If you see yourself as a pawn, if you see yourself in the midst of your circumstances, you can see yourself defeated. But if you see yourself at the end of the race, then you already know that no matter what the challenge you're facing, victory is coming. Let me give you one more example. Uh, I had a friend who always used to, we, we are often doing things uh, out in the evenings with youth groups and things, and he would always record the games. And he would be so um, panicky that anybody might tell him in advance who won the game because he always wanted to watch uh, the game not knowing who was going to win. Now, for me, uh, I actually like knowing who's going to win the game because so... So I'm a Canadians fan, so winning the games hasn't been such a thing that's been happening in the last few years. Um, so sometimes when I'm watching a game that I already know the, an the, the an outcome, I know that the Canadians have won, when they are down one, two, or three goals, or, or you know, one of their, one of, like maybe, maybe Carey Price is taken out of the game, their, their goaltender who seems to keep them in the game, when I know that they're going to win the game because it's already played. Even though things are happening in the midst of the game, it doesn't affect me because I know that the winning has happened. So David is a young man. He's grown up 
in in uh, a family in Bethlehem, and they are farmers. They are uh, they have sheep. They are you know fairly well off. And but he is not only a younger son, but he's also uh, looked on as um, illegitimate. Very likely, he was not. Um, he his his mother was not the mother of the rest of the brothers. And you can see in how the brothers treat him that he is second class. He's rejected. He's looked down on. He's mocked. He's teased. Uh, and you can see that in how they treat him throughout the scripture story. In fact, when Samuel tells Jesse, "I'm Samuel's the prophet of God," big deal. And he's coming to see Jesse, and he says, I'm coming to see you gather your sons together. Jess, uh, Samuel arrives, and Jesse has gathered all of his sons, but he didn't gather David. See, the dad saw David as not enough, not good enough, not able to be part of this. And Samuel goes through all the sons and realizes, oh no, none of them really match what I'm looking for. And he says, do you have any other sons? And that's when they bring David in. If you've ever felt rejection, if you've ever felt left out, out in a field somewhere far away, even when everybody else is chosen to come in, David knew what that was like. David could easily have seen himself as not enough, rejected out of, out of his, you know, in his culture, that was enough. Like he would never be more than an illegitimate son. But God, scripture says, Samuel says this, for God doesn't look at the appearance, he looks at the heart. God looks at you and me and sees us through his heart. That was a good word, bingo. God looks past the experience appearance of your circumstances, the appearance of the game in the midst of it, the race in the midst of it, how you are doing, and sees through his heart the finish line. He already died for you. He already gave his life for you. He already said you are enough because I have paid the price. I chose you. I purchased you from the creation of the world. You were in my heart, my eye. You're the apple of my eye. God looks at you and me through his heart. David became a worshiper in the fields. While he was rejected from his family, he discovered that God wanted to be with him, that God wanted to spend time with him. And David worshiped as a friend of God. He discovered that God was big enough, good enough, and that God loved him. And when David experienced challenges in the field as a shepherd, when a bear came after him, when a lion came after him, uh, when he was rejected by his family, David discovered that God not only chose him and rejected him, but was his strength and power to overcome challenges. And when David comes to Goliath, a giant that everybody else thought wasn't enough, David says, you come after me with sword and spear, but I come after you in the name of God the Father, the Almighty. He already knew that God was big enough. He already knew the end of the story. He already knew that God had told him in his heart of hearts that he was a victor. And so he comes against the challenge that seems too big for everyone else and knows that God is big enough. David learned to see through God's heart. So one, the first thing we do when we want to steward promise, when we want to, uh, when we want to believe in the midst of things is to stir up hope, not in ourselves, but in God. God is big enough and God's heart for me is huge. <laughs> so a couple more things about that this week, uh, early in the week, uh, the last number of weeks, I found that it's been very up and down. I don't know if any of the rest of you have felt that way, that it's been very, um, you know, there's days where I feel feel like just God's presence near, but there's other days that I just feel discouraged and defeated, and I miss people, and I, and I just feel like, oh, what's going on? Uh, early this week, 
Kelly had a verse, a challenge for Lighthouse. It was Romans 15, 13. I don't know if anybody got to memorize it, but it's really beautiful. Listen to this. Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will strengthen you with his peace and joy, will fill you with his peace and joy because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is summing up the heart of David. God is the source of hope. Not, not you, not your circumstances, not even what you think you can muster up. Not only that, but God will fill you with peace and joy just as you trust him. Like, just like David did facing Goliath, I will trust you, God, and you will be enough. And then you will overflow with confident hope by God's power, the Holy Spirit, in you. Do you see? There's actually nothing that we have to do other than draw close to God. So, in the midst of stewarding promises, when you don't know what's coming, we turn to God and we remember the promiser and then we remember the promises. David in a field knows that God is bigger than the lion and the bear. Number two, second part. And uh, this is cool. Like David then has this moment with Goliath and then he's, he's got some victory and he starts to feel like, oh, the promises are coming true because Samuel has said, you are going to be king and you are not only going to be king, but through you will come one who will reign forever and ever. That's my summary of the whole promises of Samuel. But basically, he tells David that long ago that Jesus, the king of kings, will come from his family. So David knows the promise, and he starts to see it. Goliath is defeated. He, joined, he becomes a leader in the army. There's lots of favor. And then everything flips over. There's just this horrible moment where David suddenly is rejected. He become, he's, uh, he's sentenced uh, to death by Saul and has to go on the run. He lives in exile for years. He loses family. He loses finances. He has to pretend he's insane at one point just to survive. These are horrible, like just a flip over, like everything is ripped out from under him. And he finds himself hiding in a cave. In that moment, you start to see in the Psalms that David developed a strategy for here's my circumstance, but the Lord, and then the hope. Just very similar to, I don't know, the last few weeks you've seen the, the 15 second testimonies. I was, I was dealing with this, then Jesus, and now. David has that all through the Psalms. Here's my circumstance, but the Lord, and therefore I will hope in the promise. You see it over and over, and I won't go into those today. We've had some uh, technical issues, and I don't have the scriptures to bring up for you. But, but just know that David says, Despite my circumstances, I will hope in you. You are my strength and my shield. Psalm 27 says, uh, Though my father and mother forsake me, Yet I will hope in you. I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Therefore, I will have hope. So, rejected, David learns to worship and know that it's God who is the source. In the midst of flipped over circumstances, David learns the secret of acknowledging the circumstance and saying, but the Lord. And then the last thing, and we'll get into this more in a week or two. David then starts to gather people around him. In fact, David is re renowned as a great king. He creates a golden era in Israel. But one of the things I love most about David, besides his heart of worship, is that around David, people get raised up. People, uh, uh, there's people with mighty warriors uh, mighty administrators, mighty worshipers. There's a whole culture where people around David start to believe that they can be victors and mighty too. And you read about the mighty men of David, the mighty people of uh, David in his kingdom, and even while he's in exile. 
and David's people believe that they can be more. A lot of them were outcasts, robbers, exiles as well. And yet coming around David, hearing his hope, hearing his confidence and trust, believing in what he could do, they begin to believe in themselves as well. But David gathers himself with people who believe in who he is as well. They believe in the promises of Samuel. They believe and treat him in the way according to who he is. So, today, we're going to pray. And regardless of your circumstances right now, I just want to in invite you into Rhonda's word. That Rhonda says, regardless of how you feel, regardless of where you are, you are in God's eyes champions. If you're feeling out in the field, God wants to make you outstanding in your field. If you are in the cave, God wants you to let you know that you are about to step in his promises. And if you are facing a Goliath, God wants you to know that he is bigger than, but the Lord and your future is coming. God sees you from the finish line and knows that you've already crossed the line in victory. And God is inviting you to just follow him into that. So let's pray. I want to just pray specifically for people who are feeling rejected or not enough. Specifically for people who are feeling isolated and alone in the cave. And specifically for people who are, who are feeling like, I need some people around me who see in me what God sees in me. And as we do that, I also want to encourage you, our Zoom prayer rooms, the people who pray in our church are so good at doing exactly that. When they pray for you, they will see from the heart of God. They will see and encourage you with words of God's hope, His peace, and His joy. So let's pray. God, you are bigger than stuttering video and having to change platforms because you want us to know how valuable we are in your sight. We may feel poor and powerless. We may feel that winter has dragged on too long, but you are the God of promise and of hope. And regardless of our circumstances, we can say with David, but the Lord. You're the answer for every challenge, every circumstance, every need, and every failing. So today, especially, God, I pray for those who have experienced rejection, who have been left out, unchosen. I pray that for those of us who question our own giftings, our own uh, being victors, that God, you, would teach us to worship right there that you don't reject us, you love us, you forgive us, you have done everything to remove every barrier to us being loved and treasured by you. No sin, no failings, not even what others say about us is enough to keep us from being loved and treasured by you. You are faithful and all your promises are yes in Christ. So God, would you minister to our hurts and our wounds and pick us up again, like Rhonda said, to walk confidently knowing that you see us as victorious, regardless of our failings and our past. Father, I want to pray for those who especially feel alone and isolated, hiding in a cave, that the problems are too much, too big. No matter the circumstance, no matter the giant, the Goliath, you are bigger than those. And so I pray, God, that you would allow us, like David, to say, those, these are the circumstances I'm facing in my marriage. These are the circumstances I'm facing with my kids. These are the circumstances I'm facing with my job. 
with my finances, but the Lord, because you are good and you are leading us into victory. In fact, that's one of your names, God, our victory, God, our victory. And so, God, we thank you that even though we can't see it, we will say like David, but the Lord. You will lead us through. You're the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and we trust you. And finally, God, I pray for us, each of us, that you would help give us courage to reach out to other people who can speak hope and peace and joy into our lives, who can encourage us that you treasure us and love us. God, give us the courage to go for prayer here and elsewhere. Give us the courage to reach out to friends. And God, would you make us the people that reach out to others to encourage them as well. We need each other, God. And we pray that you would, like David, gather people around us who can see in us what you see in us. And God, would you also gather around us people that we can see the might and the exploits that you see in others. God, we want to be a people that usher in a golden era of your love and grace. May your kingdom come. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What a great morning. What a good, good morning. Our God is so good. I want to encourage you again to think about memorizing Romans 15, 13. I did it at the beginning of the week to record it for the Lighthouse kids and, and shouted it out to them and heard a number of them recited on Thursday when I was on the Zoom call with them. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you learn to trust in him so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I like what Drew said. It is not up to us. We simply um, get the hope and the joy and the peace from God, and then we overflow. Um, and, and it is something that just comes from him. I had a little spinning wheel in the um, Zoom room on the weekend or on the Zoom call with the kids, and I asked them, what do you want more of? Joy, hope or peace. I want you to pick one. And when we spin it, um, pray for that. And one of the kids piped up and said, um, I think the verse says that we get all of them. We do, because God is the God of hope, and he will fill you with all joy and peace as we trust in him. So I want to bless you with that. Would we go away knowing that we are champions? If you watch football and the team wins, and there's a dad on the team, and he's actually the winning part of the team, but he goes and gets his kid and he puts his kid on his shoulders and walks around with his kid. His kid didn't actually play the game, but his kid gets walked around the field like they're the champion. That's what God does to us and for us because he's the champion. So bless your weekend, bless your week, enjoy the um, time that you have in the warm weather as it's been coming up. Follow the links for prayer room and for coffee hour. As we said before, there are some glitches with Zoom room this morning. So if you find you're not getting in right away, um, make sure that you just refresh and um, uh, try and get into that feed if you're able. Um, and a bill is in there now, I think, to receive people. Oh, it doesn't seem like it's working. You can give it, give it a shot. And if it's, if you're not getting in, know that it's not you. It's a Zoom this morning. They're having a, a few issues. So you may get into coffee and not prayer or prayer and not coffee, um, but give them both a try. And please do, uh, I encourage you, 
follow the the prayer links and and do receive prayer. It's a beautiful honor to both give and receive prayer in that space this morning. So there's some lighthouse links on the bottom as well. There's some fun games at the church coming up. Keep linked into your Calvary Connects. Make sure you're getting emails from the the office. And um, yeah, blessings on your week. And one last thing, just in case, I have uh, some rows here and I hear that there's also a few bingos that have come in. I think there's a few prizes to give away. And um, maybe for the most filled bingo card, you will also get something. But just, you know, on the way out, Romans 15, 13. And I'm going to finish my breakfast. Blessings on your week. Goodbye. This is what you do. This is what you do. Man.